Hey guys and gals, D Martin 95 here. Uh, doing finishing up this uh, build on the 180cc SSP G power kit. Um, where I left off on the last video, I had to stop because the kit doesn't come with all the parts. And what I needed were these things and the valve tappets these things right here it comes with rocker arms and I think the assumption is for you to use your parts but your parts won't fit because this is a B block so and in addition you're also going to need your cam stopper that prevents your uh, engine from uh, firing over backwards or uh, it holds your ports open so but anyways to assemble it it's real simple start with your rocker ah start with your rocker arm take your tap it screw the flat bottom side that side and through the top Screw it on down. You don't need to get it all the way through. You'll be adjusting it once you uh, once you get it assembled. So just put that in there like that for now. Do the same thing with the other one. And you take your stopper guide. Your stopper guide goes in here just like this. This is going to be really, really difficult to do. I guess I should point out first the orientation of these. Um, this longer one goes up here. See how it's notched right there? See how that's notched? It goes around that curve right there. So once it's in there, it will be like that. You do that so it can slide down over the rocker arms. And in addition... Or not the rocker arms, the uh, studs. In addition, uh, the studs will hold this in place. Same thing with this one. So you put your shorter one on this side. You'll have... Let me set this down. You'll have two of these in this kit. Shorter one goes on your... Uh, let, uh, let me double check here. Short one goes on the exhaust side, EX. Now, see how it's slotted right here with threads on the inside? You want that to go in and face out, out the hole. The reason you do that is because after a while, when it's been ran for a while, these can get stuck in here and be really hard to get. And if you uh, sink a bolt down in there with the proper threading, you can pull it right out. So anyways, that's how you do it. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do this on the camera. I don't know how well that's going to work. The rocker arms go in there in the cradle like that. And you take your guide. And slide it down in there like so. Remember, make sure your notch is on the outside of the hole. And just fiddle it on through. Uh. And that's it. That wasn't too hard to do on the camera. Same thing with the other one. Notice this is notched at the end. That will go around your curve down here. So get your rocker arm. Uh, I'm like trying to stare at the screen of my uh, recording device at the same time as I'm trying to, you know, to try to make sure I keep this in the camera's focus or whatnot. And 
at the same time I'm just like blindly stuffing this in there it's kind of hard to do but anyways I got it so that's it that's all there is to assembling the rocker arm or I don't know what to call the entire assembly the rocker cradle assembly maybe so but anyways that's how you install that or put that together then to install it where I left off in my last video I installed the cradle cradle so that uh it would have support on there because I put the gaskets and everything and I wanted it sealed. So just when you install it, just remember EX stands for exhaust in this instance. Goes on over those studs and then tighten it down. Once you're done, you use your uh, tappets right here to adjust the amount of play in between where these tappets come out the bottom of here and these springs so it'll go up and down and hit on that thing like that so you have to use your feeler gauge to make sure you've got enough clearance now for this this one I've set the intake to four Man, that's pretty tight. That's actually uh, 0 .038, 0 .038, and so close enough to four. And the next one is right at 5.1, 0 0.51. So this is metric, not inches, 0 .03, 0 .05 those are metric okay so i've set the basically i've set the intake to four the exhaust to five you always want a larger exhaust gap okay now next up we need to do in this little project is install our cam tensioner the cam tensioner let me see if i can get a shot down in there pushes down right there and applies tension to your chain. See when I push down on that, the chain guide slide down, recess down into the head some. Over time this chain will stretch out and you're going to want to make sure that you've got a good cam tensioner because that keeps the right amount of tension. Make sure your timing doesn't get retarded or advanced. So, to install it, I'll show you how to do that. I need to set the camera down. Okay, to prep your cam tensioner, or cam plunger, I've heard it called many things, remove this top screw, your cover screw, and that will give you access to this right here. I can't really show it. I don't have enough light. But down in here, you've got a Phillips slotted, um, I guess you call it screw, which uh, pulls this in or out. So you take your screwdriver. Now put it in there to make it re retract. You know, turn it clockwise. Turn it clockwise. Keep turning until you feel it bottom out. Then go over to your engine. Hold that. Don't let your screwdriver go. Get your bolt started. Uh, and I am looking around for my ratchet that I just set up and I do not see it. Uh. And that's really it. So. Pull your screwdriver out and it will automatically release the tension. I can't show it down in there. I don't have enough light.
I'll have to edit this. <laughs> In the middle of what I was doing, I realized uh, I didn't put my gasket on there. You have to put your gasket in between your engine block and your uh, uh, chain tensioner. So I just wanted to point that out. Don't be a bonehead like me and forget your gasket. I was tightening it down. I'm like, uh, what am I doing? But this kit does not come with one of these gaskets. That's probably why it threw me for a loop. But it, luckily, I have a bunch of these laying around. So anyways, just wanted to point that out. Don't make the mistake I did. Uh, make sure you add your gasket. Once your cam uh, chain tensioner is put on, remember to put your screw on. Next up, we have to install the valve cover. Some guys use a little clear bead of high temperature silicon on here, or silicone, silicon, silicone, I don't know how you pronounce it. I am not gonna, I just used a rubber gasket. I've never had a leak. Um, I do change this every time I adjust, adjust the valves or inspect something in there. I change this out, they're very cheap. They're only like $2 a piece, so anyways, you just simply install that on here, like so. The valve cover uses four eight millimeter, or not eight millimeter, but eight millimeter uh, flange bolts. Ah. It's always a bad idea to start them like I did. Alright, once you actually get them started normally, go ahead and tighten them on down. Go around in a pattern like this. Don't tighten them all the way down on your first time around. Okay, now it's okay. I like to go around two more times. Uh, tighten that down. Tighten that down. That down, that down, come back around here, <clears throat> get one final snug, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, baby, okay, and that's how you install your valve cover. Next up, I'm going to install the spark plug. You'll want to set your gap to right about 7.7 7 millimeters. All my uh, plates say to do it in between six and eight. See, I don't know if you can make out those numbers, but right up, right, right in here is your 0.6 to 0.8. So set your gap. Your gap is the distance from this to that little electrode that's sticking through the bottom right there. Ah, I'm sorry. The gap is the distance in between here, where this is touching. So, once you have your gap set, go ahead and install your spark plug in here. Okay, I just wanted to point out here real quick. Spark plugs are incredibly easy to strip out, so don't over tighten it. You just go hand tight. There's torque specs I'm sure you can find, but I've never had a problem hand tightening. Just, once it starts getting snug, you're doing good once it gets a little firm you're doing great don't push it so but I just wanted to point that out just take your time all right guys and gals so that completes this build of the 180 cc SSP G power kit sold by uh, a few different manufacturers or distributors uh, in this video series, later on, I will be adding in the CVT part of this. Uh, I don't know exactly when that part of the video will come. If I build this up now, it'll either be an either-or thing. It'll be for like a scooter with disc brakes or a scooter with drum brakes. So if I build this now, I'm going to limit who I can sell this to. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep it open for disc or drum brakes. And then whenever somebody buys it from me, uh, 
that's what I'll convert it to, whatever fits their application, either drum or brakes. Because when it's in this stage right here, it, this is just the base motor, you can make it either or because when it comes to disc brakes, the you, you don't do anything here, you just leave it empty and everything's mounted on the swing arm and the hub of the tire and so forth. Drum brakes, that means installing your braking levers and mechanism and all that good jazz. So, I'm not going to get involved in all that right now. I'm going to leave this as is so it can go for either one, disc or drum brakes. Also, I'm not sure what kind of CVT someone's going to want. I've got a Taiwan kit down there that I was going to put in there. But then again, I've also got all the way from Dr. Pulley. If somebody wanted to go with the Dr. Pulley variator and clutch, you know, I've got the whole setup. So really, it's only limited by their budget. So anyways, this completes the build of the 180cc power kit. Uh, thanks for watching guys and gals. Be sure to check us out at www.martinmopeds.com dmartin95 and I am signing out. Thanks. Bye